Welcome to Shifting Paradigms in Medicine with your host, Dr. Cecilia Cervantes. Dr. Cecilia discovered early on that an integrative practice is the best approach in healthcare. She has studied multiple natural modalities over the years that have proven to be of great benefit to her clients. When you heal your mind, you heal your life. So please welcome the host of Shifting Paradigms in Medicine, Dr. Cecilia Cervantes. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching Shifting Paradigms in Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Cecilia Cervantes. So happy to have you back here with us. We're here to explore, discover, and search for the best path to natural health and well-being. And we want you to be in charge of your health. So we want to give you enough information to help you with that. But always remember that this show does not constitute a professional relationship. So if you want to change any of your health habits, health uh, uh, activities, always check back with your primary care provider. Now this week, we're going to continue on talking about children because children are so important to us. They are our future. And this week, we're talking about education and children and about a new system of education that could be added to the educational system to help children uh, gain more support and well-being. Our guest today is Maureen Buford. She is a, an educator with 38 years of experience. Uh, she has a master's in creative education from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst and a bachelor's degree in music from Cornell University. She has uh, re she received the Lynn Von Trapp Award for Excellence in Leading Preventative Programming for Youth in Vermont in 2019. And she teamed up with her mentor and trainer, Ellen Tad, um, who gave her support and training for the framework approach, um, a framework for wise education for children. Oops, I don't know if you can see that well. There we go. And it is a system that uses chakra and child development. It is a cutting edge whole child approach to parenting and education that supports children's well-being. Ellen's premise is that it's um, honing well function across the seven main chakras, yielding optimal learning and development in all individuals and especially in children. And through this uh, approach, they have been able to reach thousands of children's and teens locally and nationally in classrooms and out of classroom settings. They also have a teaching program, a training program for educators and parents to help them um, hone this approach. Welcome, Maureen Buford. Thank Did I get you. it right? <laughs> yes, well, it's, it's Burford, actually, but that Burf is a common mispronunciation, so no worries at all. It's, yeah, Burford as in Burford, England, I think. It's nice to be here. Wonderful. Well, there's so much for you to talk to us about today, about this program. It's been in use for several years now, it seems. Tell us about how this works, and then we can get into the chakra system and how it works for children in childhood. Sure. I, uh, we've actually been working with Ellen's approach for 10 years now. And through that process of working with children and training staff, realized the impact was so profound that we began to form a plan for a, a training program so that we can help other people take up the approach and bring it to the children they serve. And I've worked with students, I mean, in the very early years, toddlers through high school students with this approach and found it's meaningful all the way through uh, development. And not only that, it also really helps us, the practitioners and parents, with our own wisdom and well-being and esteem as we are doing our important work in supporting kids. Absolutely, because we have, everyone has a chakra system and the approach of making sure that all that, all those chakras are balanced could help anyone, of course. Yes, we all have a chakra system and whether we know it or not, it's, it's working every day. 
And honing its well function truly does help us become our best because these chakras are energy centers. They're in our uh, energy body. It aligns up with our physical body. And each one of them represents an aspect of our, our nature. So it's almost like thinking of yourself as a beautiful, unique instrument. And these are the ways that you can tune up your instrument so that you can make your own best music. Of course, you can see my background in music and that, <laughs> that analogy, but it's a good one because, you know, we are unique and yet we have things in common and, and the chakra system is something we all have in common and really need to know more about. Absolutely. Why don't we go over what that is for people who might not know what the chakra system is and starting with the seven chakras. Um, yes, Helen really focuses in her work on the seven main chakras. And I, I want to say that she made a study of the chakras for a decade or more and watched the chakra system and observed its function in thousands of people so that she could help us, people like me, understand what, what works to help it function well. So she's boiled it down to the simple tools and strategies and understandings that help us attend to these seven main chakras. And they, Ellen starts with them at the top of the head. So I'm going to, uh, I can talk about them kind of going from the top to the bottom. And if, you're, if you've studied chakras in a yoga setting, you might've started the other way from the bottom up, but there's a reason for this. So we start at the top of the head with the crown chakra, which opens up. And when it's functioning well, we feel a sense of connection, we feel inspired, or if we're going through a more challenging time, maybe devoted to a positive outcome or helping someone who's needing our care. We feel spontaneous, we're able to be spontaneous and enthusiastic to keep learning. A sort of openness to learning from whatever lessons life brings. And little babies come into the world with a big crown. Mm -hmm. They trust us, we take care of them, we form this connection, you know, that sweetness and openness in them is, is inspiring to us as well. And as they develop, the, the other chakras going down develop as well. So the other thing I'll mention is that Ellen has really looked at how each of these chakras can function, when what the attributes are when it's working well, but also what can happen when it becomes diminished or dominant. So some of the things we might see uh, when the chakra, when the crown chakra is diminished is depression and anxiety. And you and I know that this is on the rise in our country for young people and for adults as well. So a primary remedy for anxiety, depression, fear um, is to work on doing things that inspire us. The next chakra down is right smack dab in the middle of the forehead. This is where it's not always uh, depicted this way in other uh, drawings of the chakra system, but I really find that it's, it's right here. It's the center of focus, also called the third eye chakra. And this center deals with discernment. When it's engaged, whenever we focus deeply, the chakra gets engaged. So as we develop focus and concentration, this chakra helps us discern, be clear. It's like if a kaleidoscope was out of focus, getting in the third eye puts things into relief so that we can see the consequences of our actions and we can choose wisely. So it's remarkable to see how even small children have wisdom. They, when they're in their third eye, they can sound like a little sage. When a two-year-old gets focused, they will make a more thoughtful decision with their friends. Um, so, you know, we want to be working on this just as much as we want to help children learn to eat with a spoon. We want to help them learn how to keep their focus here. And you can stop me, Cecilia, as we go down, if you have any questions. Um, this one can become diminished, and uh, it's actually quite diminished in many people in our country. When that happens, it's much harder for us to understand what's happening and therefore to know how to respond. And we tend to become more reactive. So it's, it's a kingpin. 
when this center is working well, all the other centers tend to function well. Um, and you can see as I go down how this could start to form a developmental approach, right? We want strengths for children in all these ways. The next one is one I'm using right now, my throat chakra. And this center has to do with feeling confident about who we are from the inside out, feeling that we're enough. It's the center of self-esteem and curiosity flows from this chakra because, well, if I like myself, I want to know more about me, but I also want to know more about you. It's sort of curiosity flows from here. And when it's functioning well, children ask questions. They feel comfortable making a mistake and learning from it. They are thoughtful with their words because their words, if it's functioning well, it's functioning in sync with wisdom in the third eye. So imagine how a child who's focused might speak versus a child who's gotten distracted or upset or is in reaction, what words might come in that state. When it, you know, it can be diminished or dominant, in either case, it's coming from an insecurity about who we are. And unfortunately, in our culture, we have a habit of feeling like we're valuable because of what we do or what we have or how we look or what we've accomplished external things rather than this sort of innate inner confidence. So we can get competitive. Um, and then of course the heart is right where you would expect, right in the center of the chest. This beautiful chakra is a radiator of love and contrary to cultural conditioning it's really not that great to follow your heart <laughs> because it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't see it it yeah. sh it shares love and um and i'll quote from ellen because i love her definition from her books that this that love is this warm unifying force that makes us feel glad to feel alive and it makes us feel connected and of course children incredibly respond to our love for them and they give it back in spades. Um, but it, it isn't a, it isn't a, it isn't a lighthouse. It doesn't show us the way. So we want to put our heart in uh, work with our heart in conjunction with our third eye. Oh, I, I want to do the loving thing. That's the Ellen's definition of loving is doing that, which supports our growth and the growth of others. So what a powerful combination for children to ask the question, given what's going on, what's mine to do? What's my helpful thing? And they can do it too. I've seen it over and over. Um, the next chakra down is the solar plexus. It's right above uh, the belly button and kind of below the rib cage. And that's where we feel butterflies when we're anxious about something or broiling or maybe even nauseous if we're really upset you kind of feel a kick in the gut the this center is our center of emotion and it really reflects our the feelings about our human experience at whatever stage of development we are at and when it's working in conjunction with clarity the center is beautiful it adds color to our lives we feel a sense of harmony that everyone is learning but when it gets cut off from our clarity and the solar plexus takes over, we sort of begin to define harmony as getting what we want. And uh, that doesn't go so well in the long run, right? Because it's a smaller definition. It's more centered around ourselves. I'll feel good if Cecilia likes me and I'll be happy if I get to have what I want for dinner or if there, if the world becomes more peaceful. So we, it's easy to get attached and afraid and this center can become a real disruptor when it gets dominant. Um, as we all know from watching people who are in big reaction with each other and not listening very well, gunning for what they want and not really being thoughtful about the whole, which is, what you do, Cecilia, right, with your medicine. Right, exactly. Um, before you go on to the next chakra, uh, we're about to go on a break. So let's hold it right there. And then we'll come back and continue on that vein. Did, uh, did you finish the uh, the uh, 
the fourth chakra already, or we can go back to it and then yeah, we'll, we'll it come up. right back. We'll go down to the next one when we come back. That'll be perfect. Wonderful. Well, everyone, stay where you are. We're having a fascinating conversation. We'll be right back to shifting paradigms in medicine with Maureen. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're back to Shifting Paradigms in Medicine, and we're here with Maureen Burford. I got it right this time. And we're talking about the chakras. We were up to, I believe, was it three or two? You know, I have to do my math. I don't, I don't usually <laughs> think about my numbers anymore. We, we just finished talking about the solar plexus chakra, and we could move down to the what Ellen calls the identity chakra. And your, um, your constituents might know this as the sacral chakra but she refers to it as the identity chakra because this chakra which is in the lower abdomen abdomen in my body it's right about where my ovaries are a right there's a right side to it and a left side to it and it's comparable in in everyone's body that lower abdomen and she calls it the identity chakra because this chakra deals with our persona in the world how we share our creativity how we relate to others and how we express our attributes. And it is also a center of balance. So, you know, we talk about leadership a lot in our country, but there's a, there's a beautiful balancing side, which is our ability to follow. So this chakra is about our directive and our receptive side and how they work together, ideally kind of simultaneously. So you can think of, our ability to speak and listen. We want children to be cultivating both. Our ability to act and wait, to give and receive, to lead and follow, and to feel whole and complete in oneself. This is an affirmation from Ellen's work. I'm whole and complete in myself. I do not need another to complete me. I come together to learn, to share, to love, to create. That attitude is really strengthening for this center. And you know, what a beautiful orientation because we see so many troubles that arise from overemphasizing the dominant side or becoming too receptive and, and, to, and following and not representing our own authentic feelings, thoughts. So, 
This one's more complicated. They get more complicated as they go down. And because relationships are complicated and everybody's chakras are in a different state. And these aren't static, by the way. They shift and according to yeah. circumstances. So some people's chakras are more steady than others. And, um, you know, we're, we're quite different. The base chakra is the final one in the framework. And it opens down. And it's also complicated because it's the one that children build as they grow. It deals with disciplines that support strengths in all areas of our lives. So the disciplines that support our physical health, our, our cognitive development, our inner well-being, taking care of details and order. You know, in your bookshelf behind you, it's just very beautiful and ordered and very harmonious for that reason. You know, so the base... The base chakra deals with the disciplines of daily life, managing money, energy, resource. There's a lot to learn along that spectrum. And when it develops well, and it's integrated with focus and inspiration, we can work hard, but feel joyful doing it. And we can work hard with purpose and focus. And it's it gives us a resilience, you know? Ellen would say, you know, life can hit you a curveball and that strong base chakra will help you right yourself again. So that whole system together, as I went through it, you could begin to imagine how each of these chakras function individually, but also collectively. Good function in the third eye supports good function in the other chakras and so on. So. Um, yeah, so that's the that's Ellen's take on the chakra system. And believe me, I think it came from many, many years of looking for herself. She's never read another book on the topic. She was guided to, to stick to her own uh, learning process with her, her um, particular abilities and her particular guidance. Yes, uh, absolutely. And she is, she's a clairvoyant, she's an educator and a counselor. And through her guidance, she developed all of this. And it and it's all it's brilliant, you know, it's spot on with what others have said. And you said that she hasn't read any books on it, but it's, it's excellent. Yes. And the balance that children receive with that allows them to operate in a way that's, that's functional, there's self-confidence and hopefully uh, happiness because, you know, what is life? What is one of our greatest values is, is being happy, right? For sure. You know, it's primary. If this chakra gets closed, life feels hard, you know, too hard. It doesn't need to feel this hard. And there are tools and strategies that I can help teachers and parents with that support strengths across all of these centers whether working with an individual or with a group. And that's really what a framework for wise education does. It, it takes the discoveries Ellen has made and orients education to strengthen each of these centers in a very natural, fluid way, integrating with what we already know, neuroscience and other breakthroughs and understanding ourselves can all be integrated with, with this deep understanding. But I, I do think of it as a missing piece in our understanding of healthy human development. Absolutely. It is very similar to what I've studied, which is the neuro-linguistic programming, which has to do with the words that we use that affect our neurology and program us. And, yes. and in, in that NLP, we also learn about uh, presuppositions. Like uh, this reminded me of that when I was reading the book that we are not our behaviors, you know, <laughs> that's not who we are um, so that kids can have behaviors and you can deal with them. You don't have to label them a certain way. You know, that's primary. I, it's, I, I'd forgotten that that's part of NLP. I studied NLP a little bit and found it very helpful because there's a lot of focusing on visualizations, which strengthens the third eye, mm -hmm. but a primary, primary, uh, principle in strengthening the throat chakra, which is our self-esteem, right, is to differentiate between who we deeply are and our behavior. And, you know, that 
it's easy for children to start to feel like they are their behavior or they're being evaluated externally. So this one is sensitive and it, it's, it's really confused in our culture, which damages it. So yeah, that's beautiful about NLP. Yes, yes. We have this tendency to label everything. And, and then we come up with, a, with a, a name and put it into the DSM, whatever. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then they medicate kids, uh, overly medicate them. And so it's, it's really sad what I'm, what I'm witnessing. And I'm glad that we, are, we have a more practical approach. You know, I think that the neuroscience is and psychology research is backing this up, right? I, I think I watched a video by Dr. Lisa Miller that Ellen put me on to, and she talked about the fact that the number one preventative in terms of their study of the brain and, and MRI splicing uh, against suicide and depression was to have a spiritual experience, which I would equate to an open crown chakra, a feeling of inspiration and deep connection. And that thickens the brain at this critical place, which is so preventative against depression. So I think this system is fundamental to each of us. And Ellen has really helped us with unpacking it so that we can get it and we can work with it. And I can see children and I can see parents and teachers have life-changing shifts in well-being as a result. It has been quite dramatic in its application. I, you know, and that's wonderful because, you know, kids, while they're developing, they are, their brain waves run at a slower rate and they're very suggestible up to a certain age. And then they uh, eventually develop a critical fact, faculty where they can reason with things. So in the very early ages of children, they take everything in as true. Everything is true to them, whatever you tell them, whatever you say to them. You know, that's interesting. I have I have had a somewhat a somewhat different experience, which is that when a child is yes, their cognitive their brain is developing and their cognitive function is changing and evolving, but their wisdom, their ability to see consequences and perceive feels in place. Now I understand this better since working with the chakras, but it feels in place when they're very little. And so when they're in their third eye, they're not as suggestible. An example is I used to go to church with my parents and get very focused when I was a little girl at five on what the minister was saying. In fact, I didn't want to go to Sunday school. I wanted to stay in the big church and listen to him. And in my mind, I would listen and I would say, yep, nope, yep, nope. I would think, <laughs> I, I would think, yeah, I think Jesus would have felt and said that. And I would think, why would Jesus ever say that? I yes. had some discernment going on. And yes. of course, that's evolving. But yeah, I think the third eye, uh, the wisdom factor is present, even in really, really small children. It's amazing that way. It is, it is. But then they get uh, these installations of new beliefs or whatever. You know, sure. and it confuses, I think it confuses a child because as you say, they, they come with some knowledge, but now they're being told, no, if you do this, then that, you know, they, it's, and we develop these uh, limiting beliefs and limiting decisions. And as we grow older, we're not, we can't remember, well, where did that come from? You know, and yeah. we, we do, are, I mean, cultural yeah. conditioning is, is probably the number one factor, right? In, in yes. people, children losing their innate barometer. And just as you say, being overly influenced by what comes in, there's such a barrage of information coming to children now. So much programming from television, from computers, and now kids are on computers all the time, which I have a problem with <laughs> because, you know, it's exposure to, EMFs and and it's not good for their developing brain, um, but yet this is this is going on. And then there's a lot of programming and social media and things like that. It's uh, it's no wonder our kids are having a hard time. It's no wonder. It's no wonder. 
And when they're looking at television, they're also seeing the, the troubles that adults are struggling with. So there's not a lot of healthy modeling, just as you're saying. Um, yes. Even in a even in a you know political debate, it can be shocking how out of balance people are. And well, even I mean, it's maybe more common than not. Um, so yeah, the modeling is poor, and it's really affecting them. And I think this work that you're doing, this integrative health approach, thinking about all the aspects that helps us be well, um, is critically important right now. Yes, I, we require a holistic approach. We need to look at everything and go down every rabbit hole. So I, I know, like you, I'm, I'm constantly studying things, you know, to see how we can improve because there's no such thing as perfection, but we can be perfecting things along the way. Right, we can all be evolving towards our best selves and our best possible relationships. There's a lot of hope when I go when I think about the chakra system because I see I see what can happen when we really start attending to these aspects of who we are and acknowledging and feeling and expressing these beautiful parts of ourselves more freely. Absolutely. Uh, you, the, what I what I saw in in um, this also was yes, the crown chakra, of course when a child is born it has an open fontanelle. That's the crown chakra. Yeah, right. right? There, right? The physicality matches right up. Right up. Uh, and then the, the third eye is that infinite view. And when we come back, we could talk more about that. that. Ellen wrote a book on the infinite view. And I thought, wow, that is just so beautiful. I um, love the book. Well, we're going to go to commercial again. And then we'll kind of come back and talk about the framework a little more and maybe some examples as well. So stay where you are, everyone. You're watching Shifting Paradigms in Medicine, and we're here with Maureen Burford. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like, I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. We're back to Shifting Paradigms in Medicine, and we're talking about a framework for wise education with Maureen Buford, uh, Burford, sorry. <laughs> okay. And um, so let's talk about, um, let's talk about the infinite view, because that was one of, more, uh, one of Ellen's book that really brought me to this work, and I thought it was excellent. Well, the infinite view are, is really based on the classes for beginning uh, meditation and philosophy series. And that's also how I came to Ellen. A friend recommended her course to me and I went in and, you know, I went in with a little bit of a, 
if this is going to be right for me, I want to know the first night, you know, just let me know that I'm on the right path. And I, I had this experience of listening to Ellen and watching her work and feeling this is the teacher that I've been looking for. She will help me understand myself better and understand how to be a better mom, how to be a better teacher. I was hooked right away and I've studied with her since. So the beautiful lessons in that book really reflect the progression of lessons that we went through in her beginning course. Wonderful. Talk to us about, about the course that you have. So now the course that I have is really a part of Ellen's work. So she has a broader cosmology. A part of that is a framework for wise education. And when I came to her for help in supporting children and parents and teachers, my project was going along in a humble way. She, um, she recommended the chakra system made a beautiful work for education. And so over the, over the time of working with this, with children and training teachers, we've evolved it into a multi-level training course. And the first course is a foundations course. It's nine weeks long and it's 45 hours of time which is a really small amount of time relatively to begin to absorb this material in live Zoom classes, in reading, in discussions with your peers. And I find that, well, I feel just very moved watching people make first contact with this material, begin to practice it for themselves, which I think is so important as parents and teachers. We want to know for ourselves what we're sharing with our kids, or at least be learning along with them. And, and then watch them apply it with children and have such beautiful outcomes. So the, and then there's a second fund, we call this Foundations One course, uh, apply, or Foundations One Ellen Tad's framework for wise education. And Foundations Two is another nine weeks where we really practice how we're putting this into play with groups and individual children a lot of mock scenarios, a lot of coming back and talking about what's happening with kids. And I think between those two courses, it really sets up participants for a lifetime of practice with this approach. Wonderful. And this, these courses are just for educators or they're also for parents and educators? They're for parents and educators. They're really for anyone who's working with yeah. children from the early years, the very early years through high school. And our Wonderful. company, did I say this? Our nonprofit is Creative Lives. And Ellen has been a huge partner and supporter in developing this training program, as has her daughter, Dr. Laura Tad, who's an expert um, in adult education and has mm. taught for colleges and universities. So Laura has been very instrumental in helping design our, our training program. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a joy to be, it's a joy to be a facilitator. No, that sounds wonderful. I think it 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 would it's it's amazing to think of people doing these courses and watching them relate to each other in a different way. Yeah, and you know, Cecilia, and also relate to themselves in a different way. Absolutely. And a beautiful example is a lot of early educators are underpaid and under underappreciated, and it can affect their throat chakra. But in, in about halfway through the course when we're dealing with the throat and we practice an affirmation, I'm human, what does that mean? I am innately valuable, what does that mean? And I'm learning. And then everyone is human and innately valuable and learning. And we have a teacher practice that affirmation and then speak about what they do. The openness in the throat supports the third eye and this confidence and dignity and succinct conveyance of the importance of their work and its impact on children comes through and you feel, wow, it's powerful. It's powerful to be lined up in ourselves. And of course yes. the outcomes with kids have, have been quite remarkable. I think, uh, yeah, no, and, and, and what it brings to mind is that it also garners integrity so 
you know, we're, we're responsible, we have self-esteem, but we're also responsible for ourselves and for, for how we relate to others. Um, yeah. And how do we relate yeah. to the world and the planet and, and animals yeah. and all things, right? Very much so. And we don't feel, I mean, this is, this is a, you know, a learning for a lot of people. We don't have to feel badly when we make a mistake. If we really look at it, we will really learn from it. But we do have a habit in our culture of avoiding and, you know, hiding mistakes. And I think also mm -hmm. there's a powerful technique in the framework of helping children understand what it feels like to really be focused in their third eye by comparing what it feels like when they're focused in their belly, where their feelings are. So we were, I was teaching this technique in it to a group of third graders in a school in Vermont. And... Um, they were so good at doing the comparison and getting in their wise view that I gave them a challenge to look at something that really scared them about how the life was going on the planet, whether it was conflict between people or how nature is doing. And all the kids collectively went into their solar plexus and you could feel the fears and you could feel the heaviness in the room. And then when they were ready, we all took the, our focus up like an elevator and parked it here. We call it the TAD technique. And I had them imagine that the, a window open in their forehead and they were looking out. And one little girl raised her hand to share experience. And she said, well, when I was in my solar plexus, I just didn't want to have to deal with it. I wanted it to go away. It was too much. It was too hard. It was overwhelming. I didn't want to have to look. But when I took the elevator up and I got in my wise view, it, was, she, it makes me chuckle. She, she said, it was really interesting because I saw a lot of people are in their solar plexus and they're all really scared. And so I wondered what would happen if I brought them all up. So I imagine everybody coming up and you know what happened? It was much, much better because we stopped being afraid. We started looking at the problem and talking about it. This is the first time I taught the technique in a third grade class and the teacher and I just looked at each other because of course that's what adults tend to do when we don't want to face the reality we want to avoid so absolutely yes yeah. and you know that brings to mind what uh, what we teach in nlp which is perceptual positions where we take the position of ourselves the position of the person we might be in conflict with and then the neutral position which is the third position which is the third eye mm -hmm. yes uh, Yes, absolutely. Where there's no judgment, there's just finding solutions. Yeah, there's yeah. discernment, there's objectivity, there's right. a lack of fear. Fear dissipates when we're in the third eye. Um, yes. Yeah. It's unemotional. There's no, there's no emotion. There's no anger. There's no fear. There's no, no none of that. It's very neutral. That's the you beauty of it. What, what I find when kids are in their third eye is that the emotions change. So that hot emotion that she felt in her solar plexus, about, I don't want to deal with this, shifted into, oh, I can do, there's sort of a, there was some passion for exploring. It's, I guess, a, a positive emotion that arises um, from the third eye. So what I say to kids which might be a little bit different than the NLP experience where you're kind of getting out of an emotional state altogether, I'm not sure. But from a chakra perspective, what I can say to kids and what Ellen says in her book is that our perception informs our emotion. And where we are placing our perception in the body can make a radical difference in how we feel. And that negative, scary feelings can change when kids start to feel that change, when they experience it for themselves, they want it. Well, after this little girl, you know, did her exercise, I asked, does anybody else want to share? And every hand shut up. You know, they, they were riveted to learn that they could shift their focus like that. So isn't that... I mean, I, I've never found this material anywhere else. There's so many beautiful things that we've discovered that are helpful for children. But when you integrate in an understanding of the chakras, it really gets quite potent in terms of its positive impact. Absolutely. It is really, they, they get empowered. They have a sense of control. Yeah. Um, and they know that 
they have the ability to move their mind wherever they want to take it, as it were, yeah. right? Uh, and the mind informs the body. So um, whatever is in your mind, it can inform your body. And if it if it's chronic enough, this is where we get sometimes we get disease as well. Yes, this is uh, this has been my personal experience and in watching others. But you know a lot about how um, I'm sure have seen a lot about how attitudes are affecting the physical body. Um, and changing attitudes, even if one is going through a really challenging physical change or, or illness that it's not all, you know, we can't lay it at our feet. The world is filled with toxins that are affecting people's bodies as yeah. well. But go walking through an experience like that with less fear, with more openness to learning from it, it's quite different. Um, so it can be supportive no matter what's going on, but certainly support our physical well-being. Absolutely, yes, because the negative emotions are damaging to us. Uh, and so teaching children how to get out of those negative emotions, I think is so important. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's critical, in fact. It's critical. Uh, yes, and teaching them coping mechanism and how to, how to go to getting solutions rather than falling into the pit of, you know, despair is, it's yeah. very important. Yes. And in our culture, we tend to overfocus on feelings. Some children who have a dominant solar plexus where their feelings are, well, what they really need is less focus in their feelings. You want to acknowledge feelings, but you want to help them get to that perspective that we were talking about where feelings calm where there's objectivity. Oh, I can feel this way too. I don't always have to feel on red alert about how everything is going and how everyone's feeling and how I'm doing. You know, it's, it's very different to navigate life from a feeling sense. It's, it's more challenging. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah, and you know when you're in that uh, those negative emotions, the deep negative emotions, chemically things are going on, and you're going into fight flight. The limbic system is running out of control, and when you're there, you really can't think. You can't think about anything. You can't come up with solutions. You are and might even go into freeze mode. So getting kids towards the more positive emotions is so important. Now we're about to go to another break. So when we come back. Let's talk about some more examples of, sure. of, of, the, of the system and how you, how you are witnessing some of these things. So we'll be back on Shifting Paradigms in Medicine. We're talking about a framework in wise education. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. 
we discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back, everyone, to Shifting Paradigms in Medicine. We're going to keep talking about a framework in wise education with Maureen Burford. And uh, let's let's talk about some examples that you can. Sure. Us. You know, I think it might be helpful to go to a middle school example from high school and actually from a practitioner, somebody who trained in the framework and what happened for him as he began thinking of these seven chakras as organizing principles for his classroom. Um, the seven framework categories based on the chakras. And um, I think he was struggling with a student in one of his classes who was just very polite, under the radar in terms of behavior, but completely not engaged and not getting the math. And uh, my colleague was bringing him in for tutoring and nothing. He's a very innovative math teacher, by the way, really good at what he did. Nothing he could figure out was helping this student get it. And then he took the class on the third eye and he wrote in his reflection, you know what? I don't think I really understood what focus really is fully. And I realize that the student that has been stuck isn't isn't in isn't in his third eye, and then I began to wonder why. And so then I started talking to him, and lo and behold, you know, through a series of conversations, he found out a hey, where did this child feel focused and well, and then was able to translate, connect around that, and help that child figure out how to find the same focus in math class, it was such a breakthrough, the connection they made. This child not only began doing better in math, he, he began to do better in all of his classes simply because he'd made a personal connection, felt cared about, and was helped to get up in his uh, third eye and engage this incredibly important center that I keep tapping as a reminder. Um, <laughs> that's an outcome that you wanna see for any child. It was an eighth grader, he's about to go off into high school and what a radical difference that intervention made for his, you know, future and over the next four years and beyond. Oh yes, um, that third eye uh, view in in NLP is the learning state, and it's where you go to that neutral point as well, or you know, you just have a little more control. You're more relaxed when you're in yeah. that relaxed state. You can learn uh, much better much better and you know similarly the same teacher had a very rambunctious group of kids in one of his sections of history that were having a really hard time being respectful and getting along and the same curriculum in the other class wasn't working as well what did he do to innovate he had to figure out how to get that first group more inspired to be there he had to come up with new creative ways to teach that actually impacted all of his teaching so, you know, we can look at an individual intervention or a whole group intervention and teachers are learning too. And they're starting to bring in skills that get children engaged and inspired, focused and starting to uh, be curious to learn more. Excellent. Yes. That takes care of a lot of behaviors, you know, when you can get kids attention. Yeah and engage them they're not going to be acting out so much no if they're getting if their curiosity gets engaged yes they they probably will need to you know different different kids will need to work more or less on follow through and discipline and learning skills about leading and following all of that can become fun i you know i i found that this framework is transformative for a group setting and builds a truly thriving learning community, which is what we teachers, this is what we want. We want students to come in the door and not feeling competitive, but feeling collaborative, happy to be there, ready to learn, fired up, able to make mistakes without flinching, you know, and feeling bad. That environment takes some care, just like a garden does. You want to kind of set it up for that kind of growth. Yes, and with that, we, we have to understand that 
kids need to be uh, nourished properly. So nutrition is important nice. and also have activities, um, have time to run around and, you know, expend some of that energy and be kids. Right. Yeah. Recess is a big place where kids let off steam and truly unpack some of the things that might have gotten stuck in their solar plexus. So yeah, the whole, the food piece can't be underest underestimated. It's huge. Diet is it's affecting huge. everyone. Yeah. It's affecting right. children in wealthy communities. It, it's across the board affecting everyone. Well, food is, uh, you know, uh, it's the, the toxins or the toxicants in the environment are also um, affecting kids in their development stage and uh, in their behaviors as well. You know, what, what are they eating? And, right. and what, is, what, are the, what is the contaminant in there? Are they drinking lots of bottled water? Because that can affect, those are hormonal disruptors. We have to look at all of that. So that's a that holistic approach is we have to look at everything, everything. Yeah, when we ran our after school program, Cecilia, we decided that eating was so important that we got funding to have organic warm meals served after school. And, uh, and that mealtime family style with beautifully prepared food that was as healthy as we could get made a big impact on how the kids did for the next three hours of time with us. So it's uh, for me, that's such a critical factor. And unfortunately, the school lunches are, are typically not sourced from the most quality foods. Um, so yeah, it's impacting our kids. Yeah. I, so it's, you know, we certainly have more work to do. We have to, we have to look at everything. We have to look at the children's well being and how they feel within themselves about themselves and about others. And we have to nourish them properly and also uh, give them clean food to eat uh, and give them activities because they need, they need to be moving. They need to be going. The screens have become a big disruptor, I think in their life. And I don't remember as a child, you know, things were different for me. I know that. Right. You know, and, and that said, I will say that I know so many educators for whom it would be just, well, there's nothing I can do about the food the kids are eating, but I can do, but I would say, but you can do all this and what you do in helping them become discerning will help them make healthier choices when they're able to choose for themselves. So to end a kind of, and that, that thought on a hopeful note, Sometimes our hands are limited in terms of how we can influence the life of a child. But when we're, when we're lined up and when we're helping them gain strength in these ways, then we're really doing our best for them. And that's enough. Absolutely. No, and that's a good place. Uh, that's a good place to, to end on that note. Uh, we're going to go to break and we'll be right back on Shifting Paradigms in Medicine. Are you there, Dan? <laughs> well, this has been Shifting Paradigms in Medicine with your host, Dr. Cecilia Cervantes. Join her weekly as she will discuss ways to improve your health and well being through the mind body connection. Right here, Wednesdays, 5 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave TV Network.